Hi there, I'm Lily and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is my third episode of my new knitting podcast where I talk about items that I've made, my designs. I'm a full-time knitwear designer so my needles are always busy and this is the space where I just share all that with the world basically. It's nice to be able to actually chat about things. So I'm Lily Kate Makes on Instagram where I post every day. I have a bit more of an introduction in my first video so I'll not bother with that today. But uh, yeah, I have quite a lot of new things to show you today, which is exciting. Oh, it's nice to be able to share them because we don't have any knitting groups or anything. And yeah, I just like to talk about these things. So I'll start out with my newest design, which is it's Friday today. The pattern is going to be available tomorrow, which is when I'm going to put this video up, I think. This is my second attempt at filming this video because technology is just not my friend this week. But hey ho, we're here now. So my Greystoke cardigan pattern, I'll just show, stand up to show you a bit more, is available today, Saturday the 20th of February. So it's a sport weight puff sleeve cardigan that was super fun to make, it was a really nice knit and I've loved seeing all the test knitter versions, a lot of people have used different yarns, different colours, styled it differently and they all look fab and it's made me very happy. So. I'm really happy with this one and how it's all turned out. It's actually quite warm. It's not the warmest of days today. You might be able to hear the wind in the background. But this yarn is like, I don't know, it's so light and fluffy. It's quite a unique yarn. It's from the Fibre Company. I should sit down now, I'll not, I'll not keep getting up to show you. It's from the Fibre Company. It's called Ciro. So I've just got a skein there. This blend of merino organic cotton and brushed slurry alpaca so it's kind of a maybe an unusual blend the cotton and alpaca but it makes for a really nice lightweight cardigan so my thinking with this design fiber company kindly sent me the yarn to work with as part of their yarn support program i have shared this in my first video i think i can't remember how much i talked about it but yeah i just wanted to design something that really made the most of the light and floaty feel of this yarn and I feel like I've kind of achieved that so actually I will come closer to show you these puff sleeves these pleats here which are my favourite detail they're surprisingly simple to knit just requires slipping yarn onto slipping neat stitches sorry onto spare needles and doing a little flip and so yeah it's really simple and effective I think so I kept the edgings of the rest of the cardigan super minimal just garter stitch because I think there's enough going on with the fluffy texture and the pleats and everything. So it's a nice minimal one that I found I've actually worn a lot. Obviously I'm not going anywhere right now. Um, who is? But it's just been a nice one to wear around the house. It kind of levels up your uh, sweatpants outfit. You know? But such is life right now. So I'm excited to hopefully wear it out again another time. But yeah, that's my new design available today. All the yarn amounts and everything will be listed on, it'll be available on Ravelry, on Etsy, on my blog and the Fibre Company are selling kits too. So obviously you don't have to do it in this yarn but I would highly recommend it if that is something that you would like to do and they will be selling kits too. But it does work well in other yarns so you know. I think that's all I have to share about that today. I might insert some of the test knitter photos here maybe. Yeah. So hope you like it anyway and I'm excited to have this one out in the world because I finished this around Christmas so it's taken I had to give people plenty of time to knit it but we got there in the end anyway and I have a new design that I've just finished which is on dolly back here so I'll just bring that round to show you had to rejig there slightly so hopefully you can see this is my new design that I showed you I showed a little scrappy snippet of in my last episode, this is the one that I want to crop, so we're getting longer with the names, but I felt like it kind of suited that song, lyric, fun, cutesy style, and I've already got an idea in my head <laughs> for an Instagram reel that I want to film with that song, so, you know, it had to be done. So yes, this is the design that I was talking about last time, that it's worked sideways, and I absolutely love knitting it, I, I just got this idea in my head and was like, oh my god, I need to do it now. It's knit sideways, <coughs> excuse me, beginning at the back, it's best shown on Dolly this rather than on me. You begin at the back and working garter stitch, so it's 
it's pro it is a beginner friendly knit really if you can knit and do a wrap and turn and literally basic increases that is it but they're used in a clever combination so you begin at the back and work around the side working some short rows i don't know if you can see them there those those darts might not show up. It's essentially made like a corset with kind of straight pieces and then shaped pieces. 15 pieces in total. So it isn't the simplest in terms of construction, but you just work all the way around working these darts until here where there are bigger darts for the bust. Not sure how well they're going to be showing up, but um, yeah, so trying to make those line up right along what would be a princess seam on a sewn garment was a little bit of a challenge, it took a couple of attempts but I'm really happy with how it turned out and it was a, a fun challenge, kind of it felt more like dressmaking because I was constantly trying it on the mannequin, pinning it on, putting it on me rather than knitting it felt like, well obviously I was knitting but it felt more like a dressmaking kind of challenge project um, and I really enjoyed it and uh, this whole region how this turned out, just groping <laughs> um, yeah that was, it was fun and the good thing with this is that when you reach halfway, you're just doing everything in reverse then. So once you get here, you can check the fit, hold it against yourself around the side, um, and you can add. So in the, I've been writing the pattern this week, it works that you can easily add a little bit, take a little bit out there, and the same goes for the sides, that you can kind of try it on as you go and adapt it. So if you had, if you were more or less this size but had a half an inch smaller bust, you could take that out of there no problem and try it on as you go. So I've been writing that one up this week and it has taken me ages <laughs> basically. Um, writing patterns up doesn't normally take me too long um, say for this Greystoke cardigan it's like the grading itself will be a good day's work but I feel like a, a top down set in sleeve is kind of my method that I'm really comfortable with and I know what I'm doing with um, so I kind of have my formulas in place for that whereas this was obviously completely different it's sideways it's everything different about it garter stitch is just a different beast um so it was it has been a challenge and like i said it's it's basically in 15 pieces well it's in one piece but 15 sections to the pattern and 15 sections in nine sizes for a range of shapes from a 28 inch bust to a 62 inch bust so the nine sizes each then have two different bust options with for a I don't really know what correct terms they are to use but I've just done sort of a standard bust from the top chart and then a fuller bust option I guess that's what you would call it in a store um, yeah so basically 18 different options and um, this bit Getting these short rows to line up with the increases at the right point to then start the strap has just been, it's taken me forever. <laughs> it's going okay and I've done it now, but I decided to not put pressure on myself to rush through it. That normally whilst I'm working on a pattern, I would have the testing call out so that I could have people applying to testing it and then I'd select who was doing it. Whilst I was finishing up the pattern, it would all be kind of going on at the same time so that I could have the turnaround be like, go, go, go kind of thing and get the pattern out ASAP. But I didn't think that was a very good idea with this one. So the testing call is yet to be posted. That will probably be Monday's job now, I think. Um, I didn't want to put the pressure on myself that I have to do this in a rush because I thought that is just a recipe for errors, given that it's been, it's taken me the longest of any pattern I've done in quite a while. But hopefully it'll be worth it because it should produce a really well-fitting garment that you can easily tailor to fit your body shape. So we shall see. My mum is currently working on a second sample. She's doing one in all black because I felt like I had to have the had to have the sandy outfit in there somewhere and an all black will be really nice to wear as well. So this is in Stitch and Story Secret Garden DK. Uh, this is yarn that I had left over from my collaboration with them as I spoke about last time. So we're gonna I think there may be quite a few of these in my future. It would have been a really quick knit if I hadn't spilt a whole glass of white wine on it when it was about 70% done. Which was really not my finest moment, um, so I had to go and have a bath and just sit there for a couple of days. Which was not very clever, but oh well, it's fine now, it doesn't smell of wine, and at least it wasn't red. So, you know, whatever. And yeah, what else do I have to talk about? Alright, okay, so on the topic of techniques and nifty details and everything, 
I have a design in a new book out by Arnold Colliford Knitwear, which is run by Jen and Jim, who I have known for a long time, literally since I was about 13, I think, I first worked with Jen. So she was a tech editor then and now has her own, well she still does tech editing and pattern books and yarn and she just does all around everything. And her work is absolutely perfect for the kind of knitter who loves a geeky technique and that kind of thing. So she currently has two, there's two books in the series and I have a design in the third book which has just come out this year. And I can't show it you because it's, they bring them out one design every month throughout the year and it's kind of like a club membership, you can just buy the book but you can also buy the yarn club and do it throughout the year and everything like that. It's a few different options. But I have a accessory pattern, but well, they're all accessories. I don't think I can really say much more than that. Um, but yeah, if you if you like geeky techniques, there are 12 different techniques with photo and video tutorials for all of them in this book, which is, I'll put the link down below. It's called Confident Knitting by Arnold Colliford Knitwear. And I have a design in there and it's been lovely to be included amongst some fabulous designers. So. Thank you very much to Jen and Jim for including me in that and in a few months time when I'm able to show you my item and the book, I will do so. But I can't show you yet, so just one for the geeky knitters out there. If you, if you fancy learning some techniques with a fabulous teacher to show you through them all, then I would recommend that. Do you think my coffee's big enough? Currently on my needles, it's one that I cast on during the wine disaster. <laughs> it wasn't a disaster, but my project had to go to a go for a bath with the needle still in it. I had nothing on my needles for a couple of days so just had to cast on didn't I? We couldn't be having that. So I shall now show you. This one is currently nameless. Is that the front or the back? That's the back. I can't just call it the red one like I called my last one the pink one. I'll have to think of something a bit more imaginative but for now on the needles is the red one. This is a really nice another loose light fabric that I'm using for a more more relaxed shape I guess. It's a drop shoulder which always gives the more relaxed overall feel doesn't it? Um, and yeah making a nice loose drapey fabric with some big sleeves because of course I mean they're quite big now but the first time I did them they turned out way too big like even I would draw the line so that had to be ripped back. But I have couple of different thoughts for how I might go about designing the bottom. I'm not going to show it yet because um, yeah I don't, I'm not 100% certain but this was originally going to be a cardigan and then it became a sweater because I thought I'd done enough cardigans lately. I thought it was about time I did a one piece. Well I uh, on my other palm. I thought it was about time I did a jumper anyway so I'm hoping that this is going to be a nice lightweight summer sweater for throwing on over layers or you know, just a really easy going everyday one. So it's not proving the quickest knit, I won't lie. This is the Fibre Company Meadow, which is a beautiful yarn. I was given this as part of an Instagram collaboration that I did with them last year to promote one of their seasonal sales. And now I have two skeins of this yarn. So I wanted to, the yardage is really generous. So I thought, right, two skeins should be plenty to do a sweater if I'm, if I play my cards right. Because I also didn't want it to be a skimpy small item, I wanted it to be quite generous. So I'm using a drop stitch technique which makes for a really airy fabric and also makes your yarn go a long way. So whilst it's a fairly fine gauge, it's a light fingering weight yarn, it is actually, it's not super slow, it's just taking me a little longer because it's a generous fit but I'm hoping to have it done in the next few days which will mean it's been on my needles for under four weeks. So I don't think that's too bad really. Um, it's a nice relaxing knit. I think after, there can be some items where you're constantly chopping and changing and doing different things and this one you can really just get into the flow of it. So it's quite nice and relaxing and I think it'll be nice to wear too. So hopefully I'll have that as a finished item to show you next time. I can tell that this is a yarn that's really going to benefit from blocking, that it's quite sort of scrumpled up now and I think well, I obviously blocked my swatch and it really just sort of bloomed and opened up nicely. So I should look a lot neater next time. Final thing I wanted to talk about today is some yarn I have acquired. 
I bought from Black Sheep Wools, one of my local yarn stores that I can't wait to be able to actually visit again. I love going to yarn shops in person and actually being able to chat to people and squish the yarn, you know, you can touch things and you're not going to pass on a deadly virus by doing so. Um, but yeah, I frequently pop into a yarn shop for like a darning needle or something and I'm there two hours later just standing around chatting but hey ho, such is life. Currently, obviously I ordered it online this time. So these are two different yarns from Rowan Yarns. We have their Felted Tweed and Kid Silk Haze. I figured I, I had a design idea in mind that I thought would work really well in these yarns and I thought it would probably be a good idea to use a yarn that's very readily available. Everyone kind of knows what it is. It's easily available in the UK and the US, around the world and everything. So I thought if I'm combining yarns, it's probably a good idea that they're fairly standard yarns. So I have these two shades here. Which I was just hair caught in it. So much hair caught in my yarn and my knitting, it is ridiculous. I don't know how I have any left on my head. But there we go. So yeah, I ordered these hoping that the combination would turn out as pretty as I imagined it would. I'm kind of like I said in my last episode, I'm kind of getting into this whole marling yarn business with kid silk or with mohair yarns about five years later than everyone else. And the last project that I did I used a white base my pink one cardigan. I used a white base yarn then with pink fluff on it and this time I wanted to go the other way around and use the brighter base yarn with a neutral fluff. And I have my swatch here that it just knit up really really beautifully, really drapey. But I think in my head it was going to produce a slightly less fluffy fabric than it did. I think because the last mohair that I used wasn't a kid silk, it was some cone yarn, I have no idea what it actually was maybe wasn't quite as fluffy and therefore was still sort of more spring summer appropriate whereas I'm looking at this and thinking is that right? Is it right to do now or should I save it for autumn? Don't know. I did, I posted about it on my Instagram the other day and plenty of people said yeah just do it, don't mind if I, casting on a project in May means you'll actually have it finished for autumn which is a good point. So this may or may not be my next project and yarn arrives in the post and I'm like, wanna cast on that, wanna do this, wanna start it. And it's like with books, isn't it, that you buy a new book and put them on your bookshelf next to your bed and you're like, yeah, I'll get onto those next. And then they end up going onto the shelf with every other book that you were going to read next and then didn't. I have my rather extensive shelf down there of books that I intended to read as soon as I bought them and then they just piled up on the shelf. And I feel like it's the same with yarn. Um, I wanna cast on straight away but then I have make myself finish a different project first and then it gets just filed in. But I have either this or a knee. So what would you suggest, right? What should I knit next? A long sleeve sweater in these yarns held together. So a fluffy-ish fabric or a navy short sleeved top. What would you, what would you do next? Bearing in mind we have this one that's super summery. Don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that one and yeah, you can decide what my next cast on should be. At the minute I feel like I'm kind of, I've been making items quicker than I can keep up with writing the pattern because this, this one here has absolutely thrown me how long it's taken to write up. It's kind of pushed my schedule a bit out but it's fine. Oh yeah, the crochet aging on this actually, I forgot to mention that. Don't be put off. If you're just a knitter who hasn't crocheted before, I promise it's not scary. I've been asked if it's idiot proof and I would say so. It uses the most basic of crochet stitches. It's a just a slip stitch, a UK double, UK treble, which is a US single and double, I think. I'm not as familiar with crochet as I am with knitting. I found even just writing the pattern for this edging was just find it didn't come as naturally to me but hopefully it's fine and I filmed the whole process anyway so there shouldn't be an issue with that hopefully the final hasn't corrupted anyway that seems to be the case lately but yeah I filmed the whole process so it just has this minimal edging around these do you call them armholes if it's not gonna have sleeves I don't know uh, the edging that flows along the buttons and I like how it kind of ripples around the buttons there and then around these edges it's a little scallop shape. So I'll be posting the testing call for that soon. 
on Instagram probably ne early next week, so keep an eye out if you'd be interested there. I I found with test knits that I nearly always get way more offers for a certain couple of sizes. Basically, my, like my size and the next size up always have tons more offers than any other size. So it kind of ends up disproportionately that there are more testers of that size. Whereas I would love to have it evenly spread across the board, but obviously I can only pick from the people that apply to me. So if you are a different size and you would like that, please do consider test knitting. So it's nice to have the, the bigger uh, range we have tested, the better. Because then I can show how it looks on different body shapes. And given that this has been so different to anything I've done before, things like where this this strap sits, I've... <laughs> If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen I basically did a survey of boob data. Um, I couldn't figure out where else to get the data from for all the different sizes of... I want. I needed to know basically this distance between the straps, which lines up right at the centre of the boobs, which I now realise is called apex to apex, in dressmaking terms for more professional people, but whatever. Um, I needed to kind of know how that varied with the overall bust measurement. And I did a lot of me research after that and looking at this plotted myself a graph and my uh, polynomial trend line of results and wrote the pattern based on that, which my maths geek self loved. But until I actually see it on a body, there's not really a lot I can do to test that. So I'll be relying on test knitters to kind of have a lot of communication with me and say, say maybe if at this point it doesn't look, it's coming too far around or it's not quite far enough that's when I'll need testers to let me know, oh it's not looking right here, or oh yeah we're on track, it's all great, um, then I can hopefully make the pattern fit as well as possible because obviously at that point it still can be tweaked. So this is probably going to be, I'm hoping it all goes smoothly, but it's it's been a challenge project but I hope it'll be worth it because I think it turned out really nicely and it just, if you like short rows and nifty little knitting techniques, this dart is so satisfying. So I think that's all I have to talk about today. Thank you so much for watching my videos again. It's been really lovely to see the comments that I've had and like chatting to people in the comments on YouTube. I don't know if I don't know how people are finding me, if they're seeing it just if I'm coming up in YouTube searches at all yet, or if it's just like from Instagram or whatever, but it's been nice to chat to different people anyway and thank you so much for watching again. See you soon!